homemade mozzarella cheese, super easy in 30 minutes. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rock and Sea Homestead. My name is Lance. I want to welcome you to our channel. And today we're here in the kitchen and we're making some mozzarella cheese. Super easy to make. We're going to make this with our goat's milk, but you can make it with cow's milk or any milk. Actually, even vitamin D milk you can get at the store. You can make some mozzarella cheese in your kitchen. And there's not a lot of ingredients that you need. Like I said, I'm going to make a two gallon batch. So the recipe I have is for one gallon. I'm just going to double it. This is a recipe that can double, triple, quadruple if you have a big enough pan for it. But this is uh, some of our goat's milk. It's raw milk. Super awesome creamy milk that we've been loving this whole year. Um, we're going to use some kosher salt. You need some citric acid. So this is the same thing that you put in like your tomatoes when you're canning. Very summer. Uh, one thing you may have to get specialty is uh, rennet. So there's multiple different types of rennet. There's animal rennet. There's vegetable rennet. There's even some synthetic kind of other rennet out there. I have a little bit of both. This is just a single strength rennet that we're going to use. And you will need a thermometer because you're going to have to heat the milk up to a certain temperature. And of course, a, a nice ladle because you're going to have to stir some curds and get some curds out and kind of stir up the cheese a little bit once everything starts working. And of course, have a big, nice stainless steel pot to kind of cook it on. So we got all the ingredients. Let's get started. So the first step that we're going to do is mix some citric acid into two cups of water. So the recipe for just one gallon would be one and a half teaspoons into a cup of cool water. But since we're doing a double batch, I'm going to put three in there. And I'm just going to stir this until it's all mixed in. And this is actually going to give the cheese the, the elasticity that you need, the stretchiness for the mozzarella cheese. So it's very important to get this all mixed up. Okay, I think that's all good there. So we'll put that in the pot. Now we can start putting in our milk. And like I said, depending on the type of milk you use, the one thing I'd probably stay away with, stay away from, I should say, is ultra pasteurized. That stuff has been cooked and cooked and cooked, so probably not the best for making cheese. But I know you can make this with just regular vitamin D milk that's been pasteurized, so. So now since we got the citric acid and the milk all in there, now we're just going to make sure it's all mixed in. And a lot of time with cheese making, you just want to kind of bring the milk up from the bottom. Just like that. And once you feel like it's all mixed in, and I'm going to turn up the heat on the oven, or the stove top I should say, and you want to Bring the heat up nice and slowly. So this takes us probably around 10, 15, 20 minutes. Depends on how high you want to go. I tend to kind of lean on the slower side. So it may take me a little longer than the 30 minutes that the recipe says. But I got one of these really long thermometers. We can just kind of put it here on the side. And you can see the milk's is actually still going down. So it's somewhere in the 40 degrees. So we have at least 50 degrees to go. Like I said, we're going to try to get this up to 90, but sometimes you may have to get it up to 90 to 95. And even if you go to hundred, it may not be that big of a deal. So somewhere in that 90 to hundred, you're okay with this recipe. It's not absolutely crucial that you hit just a certain temperature, just in that range. So now we're just going to wait till this heats up and I'll keep stirring it. Make sure that it doesn't scorch on the bottom. A nice thick bottom pan like we have really helps out with that. So, We'll give it some time and come right back. All right, so you can see that we are at the temperature we need. 
So we're at 94, so I'm gonna turn this down and just let it kind of sit there and heat. So I need to come over here and do the rennet. So the recipe calls for a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water. We use well water, so we don't have to worry about that. If you do make this at home, if you live in a city where you have uh, city water, you may need to get some non-chlorinated water for it because it kind of kills what's in the rennet. But for this, for one gallon, quarter cup, quarter teaspoon of rennet, since I'm doing two gallons, I'm using a half a cup and I'm gonna use a two of the quarter cups or teaspoon, I said quarter teaspoon. So there's one, I'm gonna do one more. And I try to wait to the very end to get all this mixed up so it doesn't get, I don't know if it does anything different or not, but that's all mixed in. So now since our milk is at temperature, you see it's at 95 degrees now. So the one thing we want to do is, is with the rennet, you want to try to get it mixed in to, as much milk as you can so with this slotted spoon I can just kind of do this and it kind of sprays it all over the milk and then you'll come in here and you'll kind of just kind of push the milk up from the bottom I'm gonna take out the thermometer because it's gonna get in my way and I'll knock it over and I'll spray milk everywhere I've done that before and what I'm trying to do is just Bring that milk up from the bottom, get everything mixed in. Usually takes about a minute. And then what we'll do after we get all the milk kind of mixed in with the rennet is we'll take it off the heat. We'll let it set for five minutes and that's going to change everything in here. Not everything, but it'll change the uh, milk proteins and it'll uh, curd up. So we're actually going to separate the milk now. We'll have curds and whey after that. Now, while that's doing that, I do need to come over here. I got this stirred up now before we take that off. So I have a, just a pot of normal water. I'm going to turn it on high because we're going to use that in a couple other steps. I just need this to get almost to a boil because that's what we're going to need to stretch the cheese. So from here, I'm just going to take this off. And we'll let it sit for five minutes and we'll be right back. All right, five minutes is over. And I'm gonna put this just on the stove real quick. The heat's off. But I don't know if you guys can see kind of how solid that looks. So if you kind of look over here, you can kind of pull down on the side and you can kind of see how it's kind of gelatinous there. Also, so it calls for like a, um, a curd knife. I don't really have one. I just have a really long bread knife. You can kind of stick it in you can kind of pull it up, see how it kind of breaks away. That's what you're looking for. So at this point, the recipe talks about cutting it into quarter inch or not uh, inch squares. So just slice it all the way down. And I'm just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're going to checkerboard it going back the other way. And you're looking about an inch or so. All right, so now you have it cut this way and this way, all the way down. So then I try to slide in my little thing here. And then what I'll try to do is go back and forth and cut a little bit deeper to try to cut it horizontally in there. Again, you're not gonna get it perfect. All right. Now we're going to turn this back up and we're going to, what we're looking for is temperature of 105. And while we're doing that, we will start gently stirring the curds. And that's going to expel out the whey and kind of harden the, the curd. And the more 
If you want a firmer cheese, stir it more. If you want a softer cheese, don't stir it as much. And you can see here, now since we've cut it, you'll see that there's a lot more liquid on top. That's the whey and the curds down below. So if you see that you got some big curds in there, you can just go in there and cut them with your knife or your spoon or whatever it is. And I'm just gently stirring them. And soon these will start kind of becoming just one big blob here, which is gonna be good for the mozzarella. All right, so we got it to 105. So I'm gonna take it off the oven and put it over here off that and turn off the oven real quick. And the water that we're almost to a boil, it's very hot right now. And at this point it just says to stir this for, for two to five minutes. And if you can see the curds, they're all different sizes there. But the fun part is just about to begin. All right, so we stirred this for about two and a half minutes, three minutes. The curds are just perfect, so I'm just gonna ladle out the curds. And then here a little bit, I'll actually pour it out, but I wanna get as much as I can first. Don't those curds look good? One thing I like about making this cheese is you get a pretty high yield from it. Some of the other cheeses we've made is not quite yield this much. Some of our favorite ones is this and Chev. And Chev uh, yields a high amount of cheese as well, so. All right, so we got all the curds into the strainer here. At this point, I'd try to put just a little bit of pressure and kind of, kind of fold it back and forth, kind of move it around a little bit. And this is just draining off more that way. As you can see, it's still leaking out some from the curd, which is perfectly what you're looking for. It's perfectly fine. All right, so I'm gonna bring over the, the hot water and get ready for the next step. Now for this next part, I like to use, I have little cotton gloves and some, uh, some like nylon or not nylon, uh, vinyl or whatever these are called, little rubber gloves, latex gloves, whatever they're called. And uh, just cause my hands are kinda sensitive to the heat or at least to the amount of heat that we're gonna put on here. So. So from here, I'm just gonna dump that, ooh, dump that in the bowl like that, splash the wall. And then I'm gonna put this water over here. So there, the recipe says that you need to get water about 175 degrees. And then at this point, I'd let it set here and it starts kind of almost melting it a little bit. And then I just try to kind of push it together. And then number one, it gets some of that, that way out. As you can see, some of the water that's in the bowl is really turning kind of a milky. Then I kind of just keep squeezing it here the first steps until it becomes just kind of one form. And then at that point, we can start stretching it. All right, so all the cheese is kind of formed together in one big blob. And you can see it's a little bit stretchy. Just the weight of it will stretch it. So what I like to do is get it stretched out a couple times. Kind of make sure that it's one solid form here. And if it stops stretching, all you have to do is just dip it back in the water. Let it warm back up. Then you can stretch it some more. All 
All right, so at this point is when I like to salt the cheese. So I'll try to get us some of the water out here. And I'll take my bowl and my strainer. And for this, I just try to kind of make it as flat as I can in this bowl. And really the salting is kind of what you want or like what you like. I at least go, this is a half a tablespoon. I at least go about three quarters per. Uh, that may seem like a lot, but as we're rinsing and, and stretching this in the water, you will lose some. But that salt is there for a couple things. One is for taste. And another thing is it will stop any kind of uh, reaction, like if there's any kind of uh, bacteria or anything in the cheese, that a uh, culture or anything, it will stop any of that stuff from growing in the cheese. But mostly it's for taste. So this gets firm pretty quick. I'm going to put just a little bit more in here. And this part of the cheese making process is messy. So I try to do it over the sink as much as possible. And I just try to make sure there's plenty of that cheese throughout the, or plenty of that salt throughout the cheese. And then I'll stick it back in the hot water get it heated back up and then we'll start stretching. All right, so we, we've already salted the cheese. Now we're just gonna start stretching it. And I try to stretch it as much as I can. And then once you feel like it's breaking too quick, just put it back in the hot water, get it warm back up. And the hottest waters you can stand is really what you're looking for. I'm actually gonna cut this in half. Cause we're gonna store it in a size about that. So the cheese is just about finished. Stretch is really good, it has a nice sheen to it. That's what you're looking for. So when it gets to this point, I just kind of roll it up in a ball. Now if you wanted to have it in little balls or do something like that, you can make a little salt, salt brine in some super cold water and put it in there and it'll kind of hold the shape. If not, once it cools, it just kind of forms to whatever container it has, just like we're going to have here. So what we do is just put it in a little Tupperware container, it'll kind of sink down and kind of form to that. And then once you're done, once it's cooled off, we'll put it in the fridge, let it cool off. And then after that, you can just eat it fresh in the fridge, probably lasts for about a week. Or what we like to do is actually freeze it and have it for later in the year and uh, we have tried it we thawed it it grates well we've cut it up in slices we've put it on pizza it melts really well it's just a good overall cheese for us and from there you have mozzarella all right so the cheese are done they we ended up with two bricks that are one pound three ounces so I was almost off by of just a couple ounces between the two, but essentially 1.3. And um, like I said, we keep them here. We put a little cover on them, stick them in the fridge, let them cool down. And then later on tonight, we'll actually wrap them up in some freezer paper, write the date on it, 
and stick them in the freezer. And then we'll pull them out in a couple months and have some fresh mozzarella cheese. So hopefully you guys have been inspired to make your own mozzarella cheese. It doesn't have to be made from goat milk, but it's pretty tasty. At least ours is. So again, guys, thanks for coming back, watching our videos all the way to end, all the way to the end. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, go down there, subscribe, ring that bell so you get notified every time a video comes out. And of course, we're on social media, Facebook, Instagram, those links are down below. Now, I did want to say one thing. I did get this recipe from cheesemaking.com. I'll link their, the, the recipe down in the description. This is the same place where I get all of our uh, cultures and all the other stuff for all of our other um, cheeses. And there's a lot of equipment on their site. It's a great company. I've ordered a lot from them. But again, guys, thanks for coming back, watching. And we do really appreciate it. And from our homestead to yours, have a blessed day. And we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.